What if one day you read just walking to work and you hear a voice in your head that says good morning and when you turn around, there's a squirrel sitting on a tree branch looking at you. You think maybe you're crazy. Maybe you're having some kind of psychotic break. You decide to go home and lay down for a while. But then the next day you hear the same voice say, nice weather we're having, and it's coming from a bird sitting on a telephone wire outside your window. This happens every day for a few weeks. At first, it's a little annoying, but slowly it becomes less of an annoyance and more of a curiosity. Are these animals really talking to you or are they talking about you? Well, at first it was just a trickle, but now a veritable flood of animals have started talking. Animals all over the world begin communicating with each other and with humans, and no one knows why. How would you react if this happened to you? Do you try to communicate back? Does anyone else even hear the animals? What does humanity do with this new information? Is it dangerous? Helpful? If you want to talk to the animals, you're re going to have to ask them yourself because they re not necessarily going to be happy about this development. In this world, animals can talk, which means they can also read. So let us say you've decided to take advantage of your newfound ability to talk to a dog and ask him what he wants for dinner. But when you come back with his dinner, he looks at you like you're an idiot. Why? Well, dogs don't eat human food, silly. That goes double if you're trying to communicate with a lion. They'd probably prefer to eat you. A lot of animals may not be too friendly towards humans. Think of the billions of years of natural selection that have gone into making them efficient killing machines. Sure, many of those adaptations have been lost or diminished over millions of years, but you'd be surprised how many remain. And in most cases, animals aren't particularly interested in hanging out with their human prey. In fact, they might view you as a threat. If you can suddenly understand what they're saying, that's only going to make things worse. And it's not just predatory animals who can be unfriendly. Your new pet parrot is eating your breakfast cereal. Your fish are picking fights with your housemates. And your cat is flat out telling you how much she hates you. It's not like you're getting anything done in the office either. With every animal in the world now chattering away, it's nearly impossible to focus on anything. Even if you can tune out the birds outside your window, you'll still be dealing with the animals that live among us. Rats, roaches, and ants have been living alongside humans for thousands of years, but now you can finally hear what they're saying. Good luck trying to get any work done. Now, not only is the ambient noise level in your office higher than it used to be, but everyone is far more distracted than they ever were before. After all, it is hard to concentrate when there is a pack of mice arguing over whether or not there is such a thing as free cheese. When talking to animals became possible, it didn't take long for the scientific community to realize that there was a huge problem here. Just how did they speak their language? There was a huge variety of languages spoken by humans up until fairly recently, but all of those languages had one thing in common. They were spoken by humans. That meant that scientists had to learn a completely new way of communicating just to talk to a squirrel. Luckily, the scientists were up to the task, even if the squirrels weren't. No matter what language barrier you might find between you and a talking dog, you can at least agree on the concept of squirrel and that's half the battle. Once scientists were able to communicate with other animals, they began developing dictionaries for hundreds of different species. Think about it. Dogs that spend a lot of time outdoors are often able to communicate with coyotes and wolves, even if they do it through a series of angry growls. On top of that, it became obvious that there wasn't just one version of dog language, but dozens, perhaps hundreds of different versions. Scientists eventually gave up on trying to catalog every single dialect, especially since cats didn't cooperate and wouldn't even tell them what language they were speaking. So now, unless you happen to be a scientist who studied animal languages, you'd have a very difficult time talking to a cat. This also created an entire new industry of translators. 
Imagine how much money you could make if you were fluent in German and Spanish, only to have those skills rendered completely useless. Well, that's exactly what happened to those poor saps. The hot new skill in town was being able to talk to animals. And if you wanted to be paid big bucks for it, you were gonna have to learn to talk to dogs, horses, and parrots. This also led to a whole slew of new inventions. Scientists were quick to figure out how to record and playback animal languages, which meant that you could listen to a tape recording of a bird singing its native song. There were even some attempts to develop machine learning algorithms that could automatically translate animal speech into human languages, but none of them ever really worked out. Most of them just ended up sounding like gibberish. However, there was one major breakthrough when scientists found a way to use AI to create realistic sounding animal voices. The potential applications for this technology were endless. Hunting would never be the same again. And farmers could finally stop worrying about predators killing their livestock. But then something terrible happened. People started weaponizing animal voices. At first, it was just low-level stuff like using a parrot s call to lure a bird into a hunter s trap. But soon people were creating devices that could mimic the sounds of endangered animals so that poachers could hunt them down. Then it got even worse. One of the biggest industries to adopt animal voice technology was advertising. Pretty soon you could end escape hearing a rooster crowing about how great the new feed at your local farm store was. Or a cow telling you to buy this week's special at the supermarket. All television broadcasts were accompanied by a synthesized chorus of frogs croaking, birds tweeting, monkeys chattering, and lions roaring. Talk about torture. Still, there were some advantages to having access to this technology. When an earthquake struck a remote village in the mountains, rescuers were able to use a bull's bellow to locate survivors trapped under the rubble. And during a hurricane, firefighters were able to use the sound of a cat meowing to locate survivors stranded in their homes. Birds tweeted at each other from telephone wires. Frogs croaked from the fountains in public squares. Fish gossiped as they floated past each other in aquariums. While it was sometimes nice to be able to eavesdrop on conversations between wild animals, it also came with a downside. Privacy became a rare commodity indeed. Even after all this time, we're still not sure why animals started talking all of a sudden. Thanks to the advent of machine learning and artificial intelligence, we're closer than we've ever been to understanding what animals are saying. We might never know exactly why they started talking to us, but at least we can listen to the wisdom of the ages as recorded in the chirps and tweets and barks of our animal friends. If we're lucky, maybe we'll even learn something about ourselves along the way.